Still segment is going to be kind of a short run about multiphonics and beat frequencies and notes just kind of mixing together, which is an inherent part of music. I'm going to have two tone generators playing through two speakers over here. I'm going to have one of them playing an 880. I'm going to have this other one playing something short of an 880, a little bit out of tune. I want you to listen to see what happens when the notes are almost in tune. So here's the A880. Now here's an 870 hertz. It's going to be pretty flat. So you kind of a raging pulsing sound. As I bring it into tune, listen to what happens to the pulsing sound. both reading 880 and the pulsing is almost completely gone. When musicians tune their instruments, they're trying to make that pulsing go away. That pulsing is referred to as a beat frequency. And it's just a difference between the two frequencies. I had it about uh, when it was 870, 870 hertz, it was about a 10 hertz pulsing sound. When I got it to almost in tune, it was around 1 or 2 hertz. And when it's in tune, the two frequencies are the same. I subtract the difference is zero. So musicians are fundamentally looking for getting rid of that beat frequency when they tune their notes. Now when you're listening to music, you're listening to many different notes being played at the same time. So there's all kinds of mixing and beating going on with these frequencies. And we get some interesting effects that we're not necessarily aware of musically, but if you're thinking about it, you can hear these things. I'm going to play this 880 once again, but I'm going to detune this note to play the G right under it. See if you don't hear something happen with a third note that comes into the picture. Okay. 880, this will be 784. Concentrate, listen carefully. You'll hear the A. G, and you hear another G, they both have to be about the same volume. Okay, we'll repeat this process again, but with a couple other notes, just to try to emphasize uh, this notion of beat frequency and difference tones. I'm going to set this one to play a C around 1047, and this will be a B flat, a whole step under it. If you listen carefully, you should hear another B flat about three octaves below this one, a very low B flat compared to this. So C, B flat, and then kind of a, kind of a raggedy B flat, three octaves under it. Listen carefully. If you focus on it, you can't miss it. So you have two B flats and then a C. so it shows up on the camera. I'm going to let this get a little loud so it'll be picked up by the camera microphones. If you listen carefully, you'll hear two B flat. So once again, what's happening is we're listening to a beat frequency, where I take the difference between the two frequencies, and that third frequency is actually perceived of as another note when they're far enough apart like that. We can do some neat things with mixing notes together like this, and we're going to go back to the studio and play around with a bass trumpet and talk a little bit about multiphonics. It's a similar process, not exactly the same, but it does come out of the fact that we can take two tones and drive a system and create a third tone in the process. 
Uh, in that particular system, it's going to involve something called mixing, but we'll talk a little bit loosely about it. And it's just the idea of mixing more than one tone together to produce yet a third tone. Okay, this is a bass trumpet, a lot bigger than a regular trumpet. Now, I don't play trombone trump, uh, bass trumpets so well that I can do a lot of multiphonics, but let me just do one note for you. And you should be able to hear the same sort of beat frequency thing. This is a little stranger because you can actually hear a third above what I'm doing. So, let me just, I'll play a low B flat. Now I'm going to sing the G above it and just hum into the horn at the same time. Takes a little bit more doing for me to get that in tune. Now I'm going to take the G and I'm going to slide it up to the A and hum the 13th or the 6th. See if you don't hear a th another note, a third note, kind of swinging along in there. very carefully you should be able to hear like a third kind of moving along on top of it. That's real typical of multiphonics when you sing into the horn. Now I'm a trumpet player primarily, the bass trumpet thing. Uh, it's, just, it's just kind of a noodly thing for me. I play on it a little bit. Um, but in the hands of a real master trombone player who has mastered multiphonics, uh, you can hear these guys doing some amazing things, producing multiple tones at the same time. Um, but that's basically what's going on. It's beat frequencies, once again. Very similar to what we were doing with the speakers back in the physics lab. So, a little fun with physics, and a little fun with physics as it gets onto a bass trumpet. There you go.